Hey, welcome back to the 69 Pillars of Success, 69 mental frameworks designed to help rewire your mind, to help you direct your mind to take command of your life, to start living the good life that I believe God created you to live. Today, I want to talk about why I believe it's so important to take every opportunity that you have to praise the people that are in your life. And this goes both professionally and personally. Right? And it's not some cliche, although this is probably true, it's not the cliche, you never know how long you're going to have people in your life, so you should always be telling them how much you love them. I think that's true, but that's not really what I want to focus on. What I want to focus on is keeping your mind in a productive mental state and keeping the minds of the people around you in a positive state such that you can accomplish things that you wouldn't be able to accomplish otherwise. And here's the deal. We have grown over time as human beings to focus on things that we call negative. And really what it boils down to is we've learned to survive by finding things that are wrong with the patterns that happen on earth. Basically, we find fault. It's helped us to survive for years and years and years and thousands of years. But now we live in a time where we don't have the risks or the dangers that we had thousands of years ago, but we still behave as if we do. So we still have a tendency to fault find with people, to find flaws, to find things that are wrong, to point out things that people are doing that are less than perfect. But we consciously take very little time to praise people. And interestingly enough, being in a resourceful state requires that we be in a positive state of mind and a state of mind that believes that it can accomplish the things it's setting out to do. You know, Napoleon Hill, we're actually going to talk about this in a later pillar, says that whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Right, but in order for that to happen, we have to be in a resourceful state of mind. If you're constantly under criticism and critique and someone finding fault with you, you're not going to be in a resourceful state of mind. You're going to be in a survival state of mind of how do I get out of this situation? <clears throat> so it's important to praise the people around you for two reasons. One, it puts them in a positive state of mind because our default setting can be to find fault when we consciously take the effort to praise the people in our lives, it puts them in a very different state. You know, one of the things I tell my wife is, I'm very grateful to have you because the way I live my life with as much as I work and as much as I dedicate uh, my life to serving other people that are outside of my family, I don't know many other women who would have put up with me putting that much time outside of the house, and it's a lot. Uh, and she does it without complaint. And I'm not saying that there's not other women out there that would do it, but I don't know that I would have met another woman who not only affords me the opportunity to do what I do in my business and in my service work, but also kind of buries the bears the burden with me and steps in with our children and with running our home operations. And that's huge. So I tell her, I really want you to know that I'm unbelievably blessed to have you in my life because I don't know that somebody else would have put up with me, right? And that doesn't mean I'm a terrible person. It just means I am who God created me to be and I've married someone who's letting me be all that I am, which is something that's so necessary for my emotional and mental health, right? I, you know, I tell my kids, one of the things I tell my kids every day is, have I told you today that I love you? And my oldest son will say, you just did. And I say, have I told you today that I'm your biggest fan? And my oldest son will say, you just did. And then I'll say, have I told you that each one of you make my life better? My life is better because you all are here. And the reason why I say that, the, the other piece to this is not just being in a resourceful state of mind. Now, my family is in a resourceful state of mind when I say that. But it also puts me in a resourceful state of mind because of this power of positive thinking, right? This power of emoting the goodness in something puts me in a state where, well, if it's this good now, what are the possibilities? How much further can we go in the realm of good? But it also protects us from the negative. You know, my kids... You know, we live, in an Amer we live in America, so we're in an American, you know, school system and society where the school system is designed to grade you on how well you can basically robotically regurgitate information. That's an oversimplification. I know a lot of teachers work really hard. I've been a teacher, so I get it. 
but the system is designed to basically put the kids through this rigor of you either pass or you fail and you get criticized based upon you know how well you can show that you remember things instead of actually learning the concepts and learning the principles and being able to prove it um, you know you take tests <clears throat> which can be down but you also have social situations in schools where kids if you haven't noticed aren't always the nicest people I got picked on a lot when I was very young People always find that funny when I say that <laughs> now because I'm such a big person. I mean, I'm not huge, right? I'm not as big as The Rock, but, you know, I'm over six feet. I don't look like I, you know, I look like I lift weights because I do very much. Nobody picks on me now, but I got picked on a lot when I was little because I was much smaller. And so I know what that feels like to, feel, to, to go to a place where you're thinking, man, none of these people like me. They're making fun of me for the way I dress because I dressed funny growing up. Um, cause I didn't care. Like I, I had that Mark Zuckerberg syndrome where it's like, I, I got to make billion dollar decisions. I can't make decisions on what shirt I'm going to wear. Like I had that mentality by the time I was 12 and it's just, you, you live in a world where you're constantly being criticized. That little bit of praise inoculates you to the days long criticism that you're going to get. Because remember, our brains are wired once again to pay attention to the negative. It's how we survive. So, you know, like if I'm going through my YouTube feed and I'll see if someone says, I love you. This video was great. You're a great person. Thank you for what you do. And then the one person that says, I hate you. You're only making these videos so that you can promote your brand and get views. He's, you're taking advantage of people. Why are we more inclined to pay attention to that post than the 90 people that just said they love you? Again, it's a biological, psychological <clears throat> wiring of the brain, but the constant praise helps rewire that. My kids go to school knowing that even if everybody here treats me like crap, when I go home, I'm going home to my fan base and my number one fan, which is my dad. Right? And I, when my kids do something like opening the door for their mother, I basically throw a celebration. Like, that was a wonderful thing you did. To one, you always want to reward the behavior that you want to continue to see. That's another reason why you want to praise people regularly when they do well, because they'll continue to do the thing that got them praise. Right? You can almost not program them in a manipulative way, but I can program my kids to do great things. Right? because I can constantly praise them. And it inoculates you to a world that's just so quick. You know, I was just coaching a great group of people uh, in my VIP coaching program, <clears throat> um, which is like an add-on to, like I have a ton of free programs and then I have like a one-on-one -on -one group coaching program that people actually pay to be in. And I, um, I was just talking about how if you're going to communicate your value, if you're going to establish your value, you have to do it by adding value, not by taking away the value of someone else. So many people in the world are wired to, I establish my value and my merit by tearing someone else down. Like, well, at least I'm not as bad as Timmy over here, right? I'm at least better than him. Well, if your goodness is totally dependent on his badness, what happens when you get around a lot of people that are good? And you'll find that a lot of people do that because they're insecure. It's not because they're horrible people are bad. You know, you may have done that. I may have done that. It's because we get insecure sometimes and we want people to value and merit us and give us and, you know, see us as meritable. Um, but that constant praise, you know, that was something that my father was amazing at when I was growing up. You know, he had a quote <clears throat> that I share quite a bit. Um, I actually shared it at his funeral. I spoke at his funeral. It was kind of the closing speech and I said you know when I left home to go into the army my father said something to me that stuck with me forever and I'll, I'll never forget it because it so powerfully communicated how he felt about me but it gave me this sense that there was nothing in the world that I would face that his strength and his love for me wouldn't help me overcome and you know I was getting my bags together because I was leaving the next day and he's like hey man he puts his hand on my shoulder and he's like I just want to tell you that it's been a fun ride having you here. Um, you've been a great son. You've been a great brother. And you've been a great friend. And I'm going to miss you. And, you know, I cried. And I still get choked up now. And that's, God, that's been... He told me that 19 years ago. <laughs> and uh, almost 20 years ago. And I still have the same emotion when I hear that. And that little bit of praise put me in position 
to, to lead me on the path to where I am now. That little thing he said to me stuck with me and was so powerful that has propelled me to want to give that same love and compassion to other people because I know it empowered me to be successful in the military and in Fortune 500 uh, in running my business. <clears throat> it's, it's propelled me and it's been my fuel and I think that little bit of praise, it doesn't take much. A little bit of praise goes such a long way in a person's life in ways that you can't possibly imagine and so if you go out of your way to praise the people who are in your life, you'll build a trust and a respect and a love. And most importantly, you will build a loyalty that's unbreakable. You know, my mother taught me a lot of great things too growing up about love and about respecting people and about taking up for your family. You know, my mother taught me about protecting your own. She would never allow anybody to harm or disrespect me. You know, there was a time at school one time we were living down south and I felt like a teacher may have you know, racially discriminated against me. Um, and my mother was like, well, we're going to this, like, she started packing the car. And I said, well, wait a minute, mom, it's just a feeling. I don't know that it's true. I don't want to accuse this woman without knowing. I, I said, mom, it's just how I feel because she did something to me that was discriminatory, but I don't know if it had anything to do with my race. I think she just either doesn't like me or, you know, I don't know the whole story. And so my mom was like, my mom actually, and I never forgot this, my mom respected my opinion enough. And I was like 11. It wasn't like a grown up. I was, she was like, I said, mom, will you please, please let me handle it? Because I'm not comfortable with us going down there angry to yell at this lady if I'm wrong. Like at 11, I had that much self-awareness and that much objectivity. Um, and that's been kind of a gift and a curse <laughs> as I've gotten older. And she says, okay, you want to handle it? Uh, I'll let you, I'll respect you and let you handle it. But th that what she did communicated two things to me. It was one, I will go to the ends of the earth to protect my son. And two, I will respect my son's autonomy and his strength enough to let him defend himself if he thinks that's the way it's going to be. So you just never know who might need an, an encouraging word. And you just never know how far that word, that one thing you say to them can take them. I said something to a woman that I worked with, it was a military woman, and she was trying to wrap her head around, um, you know, she's a military woman working in a mostly civilian organization, and she would daily get frustrated about the differences of, you know, military culture and civilian culture, and I, I, I knew her frustrations very well because I, I lived them, uh, and to this day, even living in a civilian world, sometimes I don't I, I don't, I'm not feeling it or I get frustrated. Uh, and I just took some of the things that I learned and I didn't really have anybody to teach me. I kind of learned it through my own frustrations and I would just encourage her. And one of the things I told to her, cause she felt out of place. She was like, I've been taught how to lead a certain way and they won't let me do it. And I, I don't feel like, and I said, listen to me, the reason why you are so frustrated is because you're a good leader who's been trained to take care of your people. You're not being allowed to do it properly because you're working in a bureaucracy. But you are a good leader. The fact that you're so frustrated is not because you're just an angry, bitter person. It's because you care enough about these people that you want to help them. You want to help people develop more than they want to develop themselves. And that is the mark of a great leader. Don't ever forget that. And when she left, um, you know, I missed her greatly because I enjoyed watching someone else get frustrated. Not, I didn't enjoy her being frustrated. I enjoyed sharing in her frustration with her and having somebody that, you know, who you could, you know, when you can feel somebody's pain, that's a, that's a very nice feeling that you're not alone. But she wrote me a personal note, um, you know, months after she had left that organization and just said, you know, thank you for all the things you taught me uh, and said to me. It, it really meant a lot. Um, and it really meant a lot to me that she took the time out to say that to me because all I felt like I was doing was giving her what someone someone had never given me and I wish they had. And it was just a little bit of praise. And by the way, I'm not talking about superficial, like blowing smoke at people or just praising them for the sake of praise. I mean, make it personal. Find something that's good about people and praise it. Don't make up stuff. Don't be inauthentic because people will sniff that out. I was being genuine with her. Um, as a person who had led in the military and, you know, I believed I was pretty good at it. I had my flaws. I felt like I, I could speak to seeing someone that I knew was a good leader. And to me, it's not complicated. A good leader is a person who cares about their people, um, 
you know, more than they care about their own personal gain. That's it. And she had that in spades. And you just never know how far a kind word will carry somebody. You just never know. So take every advantage you can to praise the people around you. Take every advantage you can to praise yourself too. Stop judging yourself. Stop beating yourself up and being so hard on yourself. Take some opportunity to talk about the things. It's not arrogant. It's not prideful. It's not egotistical to say, hey, I'm a pretty good leader. Hey, I'm a pretty good coach. Hey, I'm pretty good at running a business. You know, I'm pretty good at putting a team together and coming up with strategies to help us reach customers and change lives. Pretty good at that. You know, I've been at this for a while. It's not bragging. You know, if anything, I'd brag. If I'm bragging, I'm thanking God for the ability to do it. So I'm bragging on my creator, not myself. All right. Take time to praise. Love you guys. We're stronger than I. See you soon.